Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 9, Episode 7. This is a pretty erratic episode. It's got some, it's got some problematic areas. So let's continue and get started. And if you would consider it, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. And remember, this is a recap. So if you want to watch the whole episode, go to uh, Prime Video and you can see it there. So here is our first self-portrait up. You have to apply with a self-portrait. And this is usually a very strong part of the program. Everybody really shows up and we get to see their different styles. And we can see what they've done when they've had unlimited time. That's a pretty unusual style there. Some exaggerated areas and some uh, interesting application of paint. I'm curious to see what she does today. Now remember, they had unlimited time for these. Oh, I love a square. You know how much I love a square. And that was really nice. Well, really nicely done with the composition there. Yeah, I like when I like when in a composition the um, where you violate and go beyond where the borders are. Oh, I love the softness of that. It's as if she painted it with feathers. Oh, I I love soft edges and and soft coloring. There's nothing harsh about that at all. It's it's uh, as if as if it's there's velvet there. Really beautiful. Now this is really really complex. So he's quite sophisticated, but he's not going to have time to do that that kind of composition or that kind of detail today. But it clearly shows that he has the ability to do so. So. I think he'll be strong today. The next one up is a really sweet little gem of a painting. Just exactly what you want. It's, it's, it's very direct. Now, I don't think she's going to work as small today, would be my guess. She's, she's probably going to have to scale up a little bit. The next one up, it's, this is very, very soft. And I know I called the other painting that looked like it was painted with feathers soft. But what I mean by that is not the application of paint as much as what she chose as her palette. It almost looks quite washed out to me, which is a conscious choice on her part. So that's her style. This one took me a while to resolve. I could not tell what it was for the longest time. But what it is is he's got a naked torso and he's taking a shirt off over his head, which is a unique idea for a self-portrait. But it was really hard for my brain to figure out what those shapes were that I was looking at. This is a pretty standard, although when I say that, it makes it sound like it's not extraordinary, but it is. That is so well done. And that is a tool that artists have to use. You use the brush handle in order to measure what you're looking at. So Lamar is our first model up, and Lamar is a R&B singer and writer. They've placed him in front of a green, kind of gridded background, which goes really well with that fantastic suit. Look at the color of that suit. That's fabulous. Now, I don't know what's next to him, Sometimes people will bring a prop or something that has meaning to them in their lives. We'll probably find out what that is later. But And oftentimes it's not included in the paintings at all. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and he gets, we all get our first look at what they've done in four hours. And Lamar is going to pick one of these to go home. And that's an honor, but will not affect the final judging. Here's the first one up. This must be the one that was done by the person who had a very washed out palette in her painting. So that's her thing, which this is, this is, this is a fine painting. It's, you know, it doesn't have a lot of rich paint, but that's, you know, it's clearly a conscious choice. Uh, it's probably very consistent with the other kind of work she does. Um, she's quite accomplished. So I, I, I think she might be a contender for our semifinals here. Let's see when we go in and get a closer detail. Yeah, she's blocked in her forms really, really well. I just, just a personal bias. I don't like when you can see the canvas through the paint. I like luscious applying of paint, but that that's a style thing. Now far away, once again, it just loses impact because of her palette choices, not her skill. I don't think that's gonna affect the judges in any way because she definitely has a unique style, that, which is the palette that she chooses. This is the next one up. Much stronger when it comes to being able to see this from a distance. It 
This is what I call a matchy-matchy painter, meaning that they're going to match the colors that they see in front of them with colors they can mix on their palette. So there aren't any, not, not any significant swap outs going here where you swap out a color for a value that you see. Yeah, I don't see that happening almost at all in this painting. So what they've done is they've done it in their mixes and then neutralize those mixes so that they will match what they see in front of them. It's just not the most exciting kind of painting that I like, but he's done a really, really good job. And I, th I think they're going to honor that. And from far away, remember the final commission is going to be on a gallery wall and that reads very well from further away. So Lamar has so far two good paintings to choose from. Let's take a look at the last one. The last one, oh, I just, I, I actually like this one very much, but I really don't like the green. I understand why they incorporated the green because that's what was behind him. And it's going to be a compliment to kind of his reddish suit. So that should all work, but oh, it's so, it's so bright. It's bright in my eyes and it's harsh. But when we pull back, maybe it will be somewhat different. I just wish it was toned down a little bit but that's getting really, really picky. It, all three of these certainly resemble our model. And yeah, you can see modeling of forms there where they put, they've looked at the different shapes and decided what to mix on their palette and then apply according to what shapes they see. So that's really well done. Oh, she was the one whose self-portrait I just love so much, which was in a square. And she scaled up, I thought she would for today. Yeah, from far away, I uh, um, yeah, from far away, that the, that green one would be my pick. Uh, that really was the strongest to me of them. But Lamar picks picks this one to go home with him. So, hooray for that artist because that's gonna be that's gonna be a nice moment. Now our next model up is Candace Carty Williams, and she is a British writer. And they put her in front of a yellow background, which was pretty unremarkable, although there is some color blocking. And she wore this fantastically colored pink fleece uh, sweatshirt and pants. I, the color just, ooh, that's just such a delicious color. And we'll see whether or not the artists incorporate that or not. Because, you know, they can switch out anything they want to. That, that can be really fun when you're a painter. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around. Remember, it hasn't been four hours straight. They'd have a two hours and then a lunch break and then two hours. And uh, Candace is gonna have her first look. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's really, really well done. That looks pretty darn good to me. I mean, it is matchy-matchy. There isn't a lot of color value swap outs going on. I love the negative space that they put in. I like that the figure is not centered in the middle of the canvas. And the work on the rings is, is pretty, inter not just interesting, but uh, you know, that's what I really like when you have a complicated form, but simplify it. So you just have a suggestion of what's there because you don't need all the detail, especially not for a piece that's gonna read from a distance. So that's our first one. Let's see, this is our second one. Well, this is, this is the kind of painting that I adore and that I really like. And this does have, have a few color value swap outs, but, but really what it has going on, it, yeah, there, there's violet in that forehead, red at the, in the forehead, there's some orange and yellow mixed in, on, not mixed in, but placed deliberately as highlights on the cheek and under the mouth. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. And then that ability to just, I guess, sweep your palette knife across. There you can see some nice color swap outs on the forehead, bringing that blue in. That's what I'm looking for. Those, I call them color spots of value. I think they add an electricity and excitement to a piece. Yeah, to me, so far, this is the pick of the day. This is the most accomplished and the one that would read the best in a gallery. Uh, hashtag Joe is always wrong. I know I'll be wrong because I'm always wrong. So this won't be the one they pick, but so far, this is the one that I think they should pick. Here's the next one up. He's the one who did the self-portrait as he's taking his shirt over his head, which was very difficult to see because of how light it was in terms of what medium he's using. I cannot tell what, what he's using, and that's, that's my fault. I watch it with the sound off. It just doesn't carry a lot of weight with me because there's not, there's so many 
let me, I'm going to squint my eyes for a second. Yeah, like squint your eyes and you will be able to see her shoulders and the, the pink form. And then you'll be able to see her hair as form. And it isn't until you come in close that you can actually see a definition of forms. Because when you're away, there just isn't enough of a contrast going on in terms of, um, what do you call it, value that that really creates those forms from a distance. So this one is at a disadvantage for me. But I understand that that's his style, and you want to see consistency of style. Uh, let's see which one she picks. Uh, I know which one I would pick. You know, that second, yeah, this one. Yeah, that was my favorite as well. So I'm glad that that one got picked. Now we go on to our last model. Our last model is a comedian, a German comedian, and his name is Henning Wen. I'm not familiar with him, but he looks like a really friendly fellow. Kind of lights, I like that smile, and he's got some character in his face. So this could be interesting. I couldn't really determine what was in the background. It looked like it was just a, a blue on one side and a brown on the other. So we'll see whether or not the artists want to use that in their compositions or not. And now they're going to turn their easels around, and once again we get to see what they've done, and, and Henning will pick one to, to go home. So far it's been a very varied field. Here's the first one up. Oh, wow. Okay. It's unusual for me to say this, um, but that's why I'm here, and that's why painting is important, because people have different views about what they like in different styles, and that's as it should be. I, I don't like the colors used in this painting at all. I can't find life in the face. It looks corpse-like to me. I, it's, uh, you see, when I, when, I, when I don't have anything positive to say, I sort of get mute because all, well, it's the coloration. Uh, now I know everybody sees color differently, so the way this person sees color might be completely different than the way I see color. But there's such a lack of um, brightness. You know, the overall painting just is dull on top of dull on top of dull when I'm talking about pigment. Here's the next one up. This looks pretty sketchy to me. She worked really big, which is a challenge. You know, and on this particular day, you have such a small amount of time. And if you think about it, if you are binge watch anything, like four episodes of something, you know, that can happen in a, you know, that can happen really fast, and that's only as much time as they have. And remember, they're inter they're interrupted for interviews. They've got television lights on them and sound, and who knows what else. It, this just doesn't just do, it. It looks like um, to me, it looks like a preparatory sketch. And maybe that's all you can do in four hours. I'm not sure, but it's going to be judged in terms of whether or not they can handle the gallery commission. And in that case, this looks a little too sketchy for me. I like the tilt of the head. I like the relaxation of the, the body. Re parts of it resemble him. I certainly like it better than the first one. The first one was a little traumatizing for me, which I feel really bad saying. But, but you know, I say that about the paintings that I paint that are traumatizing to me. <laughs> it happens. Uh, and it could uh, it could happen on the day when it needs to be the most important day. So uh, I thank these people. Thank you for your service. Uh, here's the last one, which is more like an exaggerated version of what our model looks like. And we've seen sometimes that they completely diss this kind of approach to portraiture, and sometimes they really honor it. So I don't know what they're going to do. It also has some sketchiness to it, but it's 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 cohesive. It holds together. I can recognize that this is the model that she's working from. And now we're going to pull away and let's see. Did she? How how big is this? I can't remember. Oh no. Oh, she's the one that did really really tiny painting that she was holding on to. Okay, so she ran out. She flat out ran out of time. Yeah, that's what happened to her today. And but she got the essentials in. So let's see which one Henning picks. I will be really surprised if he picks that first one, but knowing this program, the judges will pick that as being the best painting of the day, and that's just the way this program goes. All right, that one, yeah, that's the one I would have picked too. 
Now we get ready for the final judging. Now in the final judging, they pick only three people to go on to the semifinals of this episode. And from there, those three will be judged against each other, but only one will go on to the semifinals of the series. Here's our first one up. I agree. It was a strong effort. A good size. Looked like our model. Certainly competent. This one surprised me a little bit, but I guess they're happy today with a more exaggerated view of somebody, and it seems like each year they will kind of go in that direction, and okay. This one we talked about before, which I find weak when it comes to the pigment, which is this person's style. So I expect that if they were to continue, we would see more of this, and I would like to see more of it. Now the final judging begins. In the final judging, we get to see their self-portraits where they had unlimited time next to, then there they are standing next to the self-port. Uh, no, that's standing next to what they did today. So one of these people is going to go on to the semifinals of the series, series being series nine that we're now uh, recapping. And I don't know which one it will be. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's what I thought. She scaled up. So she ran out of time. She, she could certainly do a really good job. And you can see if she had only concentrated on the head, she probably would have gotten more done. But she was smart to incorporate more of the body. So she's going to be judged on what she did today. In other words, what you produce, not on what you didn't produce. So it's really not about the completion of a painting. All right, here's the next one. Yeah, I struggle with this because I think it's so well done. Oh, she's such a wonderful painter. But her choice of color is so, so... You know what? It's also really, really high key. If you squint your eyes, the, the darkest dark is only a mid-tone. That's what it is for me. They're, it's missing the value range I want to have from white all the way to black. And here's the last one. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they pick this one. I... They've passed over this type of painting a lot. And by this type of painting, I'm kind of referring to when something is really, really blended. And so it looks a little bit like it might have been used for an advertisement or a movie poster. It's just a style. Um, and they've honored it before, and then other times they don't. But we're about to find out who the winner is. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Well, we already know my favorite painting of the day didn't make it this far. Ah, okay, they picked this one. So we will see more from her. As we move on, and I think, yes, our next episode is the semifinals. So we were going to see more from her right away. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.